Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our SpecFlow course. And in this video, I'll be talking about working with dynamic data as using auto fixture in SpecFlow. So auto fixture is not part of SpecFlow, but this is a popular library in .NET world which helps us to create the dynamic data and we can use this dynamic data feature of auto fixture within SpecFlow to actually create the test data which if we think that we are not too much focused on the actual data itself rather we want to populate certain data into our testing so that we could complete our test that we are trying to achieve so that's what we'll be discussing in this particular video and this video is going to be quite interesting because this library will make our life much much easier to set up the test data and specflow could able to even use the potentials of auto fixture within itself so let's see how it works so if you have not heard about this auto fixture library before auto fixture makes it easier for developers or even testers to do test driven development and automation testing by making by automating non-relevant test fixture setup allowing the test developers to focus on the essentials of each test cases this is what is the whole purpose of this particular auto fixture so you don't necessarily have to do a lot of setup of the test data as using auto fixer because it is going to create things for you automatically so let's see how this actually works itself so in order to make this thing happen i'm actually going to go to our project and i'm going to go to the dependencies i'm going to select the manage NuGet package and then i'm actually going to search for the NuGet package in the browse so let's go to auto fixture this one and then i'm just going to install that let's hit ok then once the installation is done you can see that within the packages we have the auto fixture which is great and then i'm actually going to create another feature file this time instead of using the calculator feature because it doesn't make any sense if i keep using this one and i'm going to use the new item i'm going to choose the feature file for spec flow and i'm going to call this as user.feature and let's give a short summary for that to test the user's functionality i'll say this is going to be for my smoke testing and the scenario name i'm actually going to give this scenario for user data entry and i'm going to say given i enter random user data and i'm just even going to remove all the steps over here we'll try building this one one by one but this is what we have at the moment as the step and then i'm just going to right click and i'm going to say define step i'm going to copy the steps over here and as the best practice of the step definitions it is always better that we create a separate class file for the feature files so that we can differentiate like what step definition is actually going to be used for that particular feature file if you just keep mixing all the feature files within the same class file like the calculator step definition it still works but that's a bad practice in the spec flow so if i just go over here and if i just paste this particular step definition and let's say if i remove the pending step definition let me even build this particular solution you'll see that i have this particular uh, user feature file and you can also see that the step definition is even being mapped so if i go to the definition it is going to take me to the calculator step definition but it is recommended practice that we actually don't put all the step definition in the same class file for the calculator step definition for example because we're dealing with the user feature it is always recommended that we actually create a step definition for a specific feature file for example this is going to be for the user so i'm going to say uh, user step definition hit enter and over here i'm just going to put this particular given and i'm also going to decorate this particular class with the binding attribute and hit control dot i'm going to save this that's it i'm just going to remove this unnecessary usings there we go which is good so this is how we should be doing it basically and then over here for the given i enter the random user data i'm actually going to be thinking of that particular person is going to be holding certain data and let's say how the person structure is even going to look like which i am probably going to be dynamically entering this time 
So for example, if I have a, a user, so let's call this as a record type of C sharp, where I'm actually gonna say the user, and this particular user is gonna be basically like a, a, a class, and I'm just gonna say prop like the name, and then let's call this as just like an init only method. And then I'm also gonna say his email and his address probably and his phone number, something like this. And I wanted to populate all these data dynamically for this particular user, just like the test data. But I'm not worried about what data that I'm gonna be populating. I'm only worried about the data to be populated for that particular test that I'm trying to call. So that's all my idea is all about. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna use this auto fixture I was talking about. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do a call like var person is equal to, and then I'm gonna say new uh, fixture, something like this. So basically this is gonna be from the auto fixture. If you hit control dot, you'll see that using auto fixture comes in. This guy. So I'm just going to hit control dot and add this. And then once I hit dot, you will see there are so many different method comes in. And the one which I'm going to be using is going to be the create method where I'm going to be create for a specific type or the type that I wanted to basically create the data for. And here I'm just going to pass the user class that we have something like this. That's it. So now the person is actually even been created for us. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I could able to print this particular uh, data that I'm actually going to be inserting. So just hit control dot for using and then right line. And over here, I'm just going to use the string interpolation and I'm going to say the name, the user, probably the user I'm going to pass the name, which is going to be the person dot name. The user has email, which is going to be the person that we have created over here dot email and his address person dot address with probably phone number It's going to be person dot phone something like that that's it this is what i'm probably going to be injecting by like dynamically going to be creating and we'll see if those dynamic data are even going to be coming up for us so in order to do that i'm just going to run this test and see what is going to basically happen so let's try to run this particular scenario and you will see that the test has been executed but the only thing that you need to be noting is so let's try to open the test log over here so that you can see it very clearly. It says that the user, and you can see that it brings me up a name with a GUID value over here, has an email, something like this, and has an address, something like this, with a phone number of 236. So it is actually creating a randomly generated data. Like this value is gonna be keep generating each and every time like different data. So it's not gonna be always the same. So if you are going to be using the same given like multiple times over here, something like this, if I'm gonna save this, and if I try running the test, you will see that the console output this time is gonna be printing different value for each and every test step that it has executed do you see that it is going to be executing different grid value for all these tests that it is trying to execute so this is how you could see that we could insert the random data from auto fixture in our spec flow scenarios but now you may be thinking that this email is not even a valid email like at least it should be having an ad and the domain name like why is this thing is even been calling like injecting like a grid value so it doesn't make any sense while injecting those values well you can get around those problem here you can actually use what is called as a build method of the fixture something like this where you can use a 
width method along with it for example something like this and over here you could pass the x dot email and then you can specify a hard-coded type of email that you wanted to pass for example the email should always be something like uh, karthik at techgeek.co.in something like that i'm just saying uh, and then you can call the create method which we just called something like this and let's try to align this a bit more so that it can be readable and now if i try running this particular test you will see that the test is going to be executed but just that the email is always going to be karthik at techgeek.co.in but other details are going to be the exact same thing i mean you can keep extending this like with a different random uh, quid value at techic.core.in as well like you can keep extending this as much as you wanted all those things you could be able to achieve this using the auto fixer library but using spec flow along with auto fixer that's going to be a lot of magic in our next video where we we'll talk about the step argument transformation we'll also discuss how this email problem can be resolved using dynamic domain values.